Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to extend your photos in Adobe Photoshop. There's a few reasons you might want to do this. Um, usually it's because you're trying to apply your image to a clipping mask or to a shape and um, your image just isn't quite the right dimensions that you need it to be so you need to either extend it vertically or horizontally. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do this and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. Um, there are pluses and minuses to each, uh, each technique and I'll let you know as I go what those pluses and minuses are. Um, also, one last thing to mention before I start is that uh, depending on your image it's going to be obviously easier or harder to do this. So uh, this is kind of probably a mid-level image and I'll show you why here in a second. So follow along if you will. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm going to take this background layer I'm just going to drag it into the new layer button uh, so I can make a copy of that background layer. And uh, that new layer button is just down here on your layer panel. You can copy it, uh, drag it down there, or you can press Control J on your keyboard to make a copy of that layer. Um, and go ahead and just hide that background layer just so it's not a factor. And the reason that we make a copy, again, uh, I know I've explained this before, but it's just so that you have an original that you can go back to if you don't like what you've done to your copy here. All right, so now that we have our copy, we need to alter our canvas so that we have um, a place to work on. So I'm going to go up to image up at the top, down to canvas size, and I'm going to change the width to something bigger than it already is. Right now mine is 5.33 uh, inches. You're going to want to make sure that this relative is unchecked, otherwise it will just make your canvas um, larger um, vertically and horizontally. So I want to make the width bigger. I'm going to make it an even 7 uh, inches on mine. Depending on your image, you're just going to you know, make it slightly larger. And the larger you get, the harder this is going to be to do. Uh, I think I'm going to go a little bit larger even yet, just to kind of illustrate how this is going to actually work. So I'm going to go 10 here, and mines I'm going larger probably than you should go. Um, you want to keep this as you don't. You want to edit it as least as possible. So uh, what I'm going to do now is show you um, the first way to do it and the worst way and the way that you actually don't want to do. So you can press Control T on your keyboard or you can go to edit down to free transform and what you can do is just drag out these sides and as you can see that's the worst way to do it because it completely warps your image in the middle here um, but actually the rest of the image isn't that bad so that's a good thing to know. Um, okay so I'm gonna press Control Z to go back and you can see just like how warped this is and uh, how bad of a thing that was to do. Okay, yeah, there you go. Okay, so the next uh, the next way to do it, and uh, a, a way better way, but uh, still not the best probably, is to go to Edit, down to Content Aware Scale, or you can press uh, Alt Shift Control C, and that would do the same thing. Content Aware Scale is only in the later versions of Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CS5, so I know it's in that. I believe it's in uh, CS4 as well. If you're in CS3, you're going to have to follow along with the last technique that I'm going to show you. But uh, Content Aware Scale, it actually can see, it, it can take into account the, uh, the image that you're scaling, and it won't warp that tree in the middle. It, uh, as you can see, it's kind of warped some of these areas um, underneath of it, so it's not bad for a, a quick way to do this. It doesn't look horrible. Uh, at least the, the tree's not scaled bad. Um, this works with people sometimes um, a lot better, but uh, like I said, it's not probably the best way to do it, and I'm going to show you the best way and the way that I would do it. Okay, so I'm going to press Control Z to go back again, or you could go to your history and go back, and that's just, uh, you go to, up to the top to window, and down to history, to bring up your history, and you can go back that way too. So, okay. So here's the last way that you can do it. So, you want to select your marquee tool on your tool palette, and you want to make a selection of the area that you want to extend. So I'm going to make a small selection, or actually any selection that uh, is just going to look okay, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and um, make that selection, and I'm going to press Control C and then Control V on my keyboard, and that's going to make just a copy of what I had selected there. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, press V to get my uh, my my uh, selector, um, my move tool back. And I'm just going to, with that new layer selected, I'm going to just move that over a little bit. 
And then if you want, you can use the, uh, the content aware scale on that new layer just to uh, make it fill out the rest of that side there. And that's kind of a better way to do it. Okay. And I'll just put it over to an area where I think it's going to kind of merge well with the other image. And I'll just double click to place it. And you can see that there's a line there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that layer that I have just, um, just copied and pasted there. And I'm going to make a clipping mask on there. So you click your clipping mask button down at the bottom. And uh, with the clipping mask selected, you will then select your eraser tool and change the size of it to something about like this in relation to that line. So that there's a little bit of an eraser on each side of it, but you don't want to erase too much where you're going to get into the background of the image. And uh, take your hardness down to zero. And what you want to do is you just want to soften up that line a little bit. If you click up at the top once, then go down to the bottom of the line and hold shift and click again, it will erase all the way down. And as you can see, that's uh, softened it up quite a bit. You can kind of just go up and down that image and kind of just dab a little bit and that'll kind of do a lot for you. All right. Now, uh, if, if that's not perfect, if you want to make it a little better, you can use the clone stamp tool and what you would do is you just uh, add a layer and you would maybe want to name it stamp or something. Make sure up at, uh, oh, uh, click on your clone stamp tool on the toolbar. Make sure you have all layers up at the top and uh, make your brush a little bit larger. You can do that up here. Make your hardness uh, very soft, probably zero. And then you can uh, press Alt on your keyboard wherever you want to make a selection and click. And that's just uh, sampling an area there. And you can just go ahead and clone stamp that line away a little bit more. All right. And that's a, a good way to get rid of that line as well. But my line's pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and move on over to the other side. And I'm going to uh, actually I'm I'm going to do the same thing over there. So I might just not completely do it this time since you already know how to do it. But anyway, uh, so what you would need to do is you need to click back on that original layer so that you can take your marquee tool and make your selection. And you need to be on that original layer, otherwise you're going to be selecting an area that's uh, that there's nothing there. All right, so you press Control C and Control V. That'll make a new layer. And what you need to do is press V on your keyboard to get your move tool back or you can get it from your toolbar. It's the very first tool. And you do the same thing. So you go up to Edit, down to Content Aware Scale, and stretch that over to the edge. All right, and that one's a little bit more warped. So, um, so that's one reason why I say to do it the least amount as possible. So what you'd want to do here is maybe cut the difference, only do it halfway this time, and then do, use this technique again to uh, finish it off the rest of the way, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one real quick using the same techniques. I'm adding a clipping mask and I'll select my eraser. I press E on my keyboard to just directly select it like that. And as you can see, since I have not enough overlap, I'm starting to erase and you can see the background. So all I would need to do there is take my move tool and just move that layer over a little bit more and, uh, and fixes that problem. All right. So I would probably want to go in and clone stamp some of these things away so that they don't look exactly the same right here. Uh, you can do that on that same stamp layer if you want. I'll press Alt and click and just, oh, Alt uh, with your clone stamp selected, Alt and click, make a selection, and you can just kind of paste away some of those things so it doesn't look exactly like the layer you just copied, all right? And so that's pretty much it. You can go ahead and do that again and extend it all the way over. I'm not going to do it here just to try to keep the video a little bit shorter, but that's essentially how you do it. I think that's the best way to do it because you have the least amount of warping of your image. All right. So I hope you learned something here. Um, I hope you liked this tutorial. Please like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. And if you did like this tutorial, please click the like button on YouTube. And thank you for watching.